Okay. Um, so I am Jean Delvar. I'm working uh, at SUSE. Um, and one of my tasks there is to maintain a, a tool called Quilt, a uh, tool which is used to maintain patch series and apply patch series. Um, before I go on, I would like to make a quick poll um, to know if I should start with a more basic presentation of Quilt. Uh, so, how many of you have ever heard of Quilt? That's good. How <laughs> many of you uh, use Quilt uh, on a regular basis? Okay, so I think I will start with the uh, most basic presentation of Quilt. It will be rather quick. Um, and then we can move to a more advanced topics. Uh, this quick introduction uh, of slides, which are not from me actually, I stole them from uh, one of my colleagues at SUSE. So credits to him for the slides. Um, so a quick introduction on, on what Quilt is, uh, what it's good for. Uh, Quilt is a tool which lets you manage a series of patches uh, on top of an already existing working directory. Uh, with Quilt, you can import patches in a series. You can remove them if you no longer need them. Uh, you can navigate through the series, which means you apply or unapply patches. Uh, you can modify the patches or uh, create new patches anywhere in the series. Uh, you can merge patches together uh, and you can export them in various ways and formats. Uh, by email or uh, in a single patch because it's easier to send to someone or things like that. So you can manipulate patches in, in various ways. Uh, in practice, this is what it looks like. Uh, you have an original source tree with original files. Uh, on top of that, you add a patch series, which is basically a, a simple text file which tells you in which uh, sequence patches are uh, in which order they must be applied, uh, so that, that can be applied in the right order. Um, and the result is a patched source tree, so uh, not only the original files, but every change you wanted to be done on that, uh, thanks to patches you added. Um, it's worth noting that Quilt modifies the source tree in place. Uh, but uh, don't be afraid, it keeps a backup copy of every file it touches for every patch that touches that file. So you can always uh, roll back and revert to exactly the original state you had by just unapplying every patch. Um, the previous picture was with a, a fully applied uh, series, but you can also navigate through the patch series, which means the top of the stack is not necessarily uh, the end of the series. You can stop at any point in the series uh, to have a partially patched tray, uh, stopping at exactly the point you want to examine it. Uh, maybe you want to do some benchmarks at that point or regression testing or uh, modify that specific patch or anything. So you move uh, the top of the stack to a patch you want to work on. In this example, only the first two patches are applied and the rest is not applied. The basic operations you can do with Quilt, um, moving the top of the stack uh, with Quilt push and Quilt pop uh, with the different options. You can move by more than one uh, patch at a time. You can go directly to the bottom of the top or uh, go to a specific patch if you want. Uh, the new command will uh, let you create new patch uh, at the point where you are in the stack. Uh, once you have created a patch, uh, you will want to add the files in it. So you let Quilt know uh, in that patch I'm going to modify that specific file or these specific files. Uh, so that at that time Quilt can make backup of the files uh, so that the original state is not lost. And when you are done editing your file, your files, uh, you can refresh, uh, this generate a clean patch 
uh, with all the changes in it. So after that, you can uh, share that with anyone. Um, we have commands to query uh, the current set of the patch series. Uh, Quilltop will let you uh, know where you are in the stack. Uh, previous and next give you, as you would expect, the previous and next patch on the stack. Uh, Quill series will list the whole uh, patch series. Uh, with dash v, you can have uh, additional hints. Uh, visually better with colors and so on. Um, you can have a list of applied and up unapplied patches, uh, which is mostly used uh, for batch completion so that it can complete an, uh, the right type of patches. And usually you don't type these commands uh, yourself. Uh, and finally, you have uh, two commands uh, which will tell you which uh, files are modified, uh, uh, which patches modify a given file. Uh, the first command, patches, just give you a, a list of, of uh, patches. Uh, the second command is more like uh, git blame. Uh, it will annotate the file and uh, point uh, for every line uh, to the patch which last, last modify that line. And finally, a few other commands. Uh, Quilldiff will, will basically uh, let you see the current patch as it exists, uh, not on the disk, but uh, if you have made more changes, it will also list uh, all the recent changes you made to the file. Uh, you can edit the header of the patches as well, which is quite convenient when you are going to send the patch to someone, you want to add a, a proper subject and description. Uh, signed off byline or whatever you need to transmit uh, together with uh, the patch itself. Um, you can rename patches, you can delete patches, uh, quite basic uh, operations too. Um, you can import patches from a uh, standard patch format, uh, which you can get from uh, somewhere else, from Git or from CVS or any other tool which generates standard patches. Uh, you can rename the patch on the fly as you do that if you want. Um, and then the last four commands are more advanced ones. Um, Quill setup will let you set up a patch series uh, starting from the spec file uh, from RPM packages typically come with a spec file and patches and with that you can set up a working tree with just one command it will uh, uh, expand the archive with all the source files and prepare all the patches so that you can apply them in sequence. Uh, and then the mail command which uh, can let you send mail uh, with all the patches properly formatted with proper headers uh, and threading and so on. Um, the last one, Quilt Import, is a bridge uh, well, it's a git command, but it's related to Quilt. Uh, it lets you import uh, into git something that you've been working on in Quilt, which is quite convenient, at least for my, my workflow and I'm sure others as well. Okay, so that's it for the basic presentation of uh, the various commands of, of Quilt. Uh, maybe to clarify things, uh, I can make a quick Demo, it's a bit small, I think I should. Is that readable? Yeah. Um, so, for example, this is uh, the latest open SUSE kernel, uh, which has all the, plies, the patches applied. So. Uh, here we see the series command, uh, which we list uh, all the patches currently uh, applied on top uh, of the OpenSUSE factory kernel. Uh, so we can see it's a reasonable list, uh, a little over 200 patches. Um, if we add uh, dash v, for example, uh, we have a leading plus, si leading plus sign which tells us which patches are applied, uh, equal sign which tells us uh, the currently applied patch uh, on top, 
and then uh, the following patches are not applied at this point. Um, if, for example, I pop, it will remove, oh, we'll have to refresh first because apparently, or oh, just force. Um, it will unapply one patch and um, then we can see that in series uh, we have one less patch uh, applied. So I can navigate through that. Uh, I can ask, uh, for example, uh, which files are modified by the current uh, <coughs> patch. I can ask to see what it looks like uh, with coloring, so it's easy to see. Okay, this is the, the kind of basic operation uh, you can do with Quilt. Um, and now I can move on to more advanced topics and, and discussions. Um, so the quick introduction to Quilt is already done. I will not do it again. Um, I will discuss briefly Quilt uh, versus Git because Git is used by, by a lot of people now. Uh, most projects have migrated to it. It's very powerful. Uh, can do a lot of things. Um, but Quilt has also very interesting, uh, strong points, I think, uh, which Git doesn't really match. Um, then we will examine a few practical use cases of Quilt, uh, mostly as I use it and as we use it at SUSE uh, for various projects. Um, and we'll finish with known limitations of the tool and cool tips to get the better of, of Quilt. This we did already. Um, this is a question I often get uh, related to Quilt, uh, which someone in this room asked me even yesterday. Uh, oh, we have Git now. Uh, Git is so great, it's so powerful. Uh, why would you still need to use Quilt for anything? Uh, Git should take it all and control everything. Um, I beg to disagree. Um, that right, that Git is very powerful. I'm not uh, saying it's not. It's very good to store the work once uh, all the work is done. Uh, you can handle huge amounts of data uh, in Git uh, at a very reasonable uh, disk space price. Uh, it's very fast even to process huge amounts of data. Uh, it handles branching uh, much better than I think any other tool ever did before. Uh, that's right. Uh, Git also makes digging for history very easy. Uh, the Git blame, Git log commands are wonderful tools. However, um, results are only as good as developers are uh, when they commit stuff. And my own experience is that developers are not always that careful when they commit stuff to Git, uh, which sometimes causes the history to not be as good as it could or should. Um, let me give you a few personal examples of that, uh, things that happen to me every now and then. Um, as a kernel developer, sometimes I send patches to kernel maintainers. Um, and it happens that after a couple of days, uh, I read my code again and realize that uh, it was not so good. Uh, maybe I missed a corner key somewhere or uh, I found a better way to implement the same thing. And so I send a, a new patch to the same maintainer, and the same maintainer tells me, ah, I'm sorry, man, uh, I already applied your first patch. Uh, I didn't realize it was imperfect or even broken, so it's already applied. Uh, so please don't send me a replacement patch. Uh, instead, send me uh, an incremental patch, uh, kind of fix up, uh, and I will apply that. <coughs> and the result is that uh, forever in the Git history, uh, you have two commits, first one, which is broken, and second one, which fixes it. Uh, and in general, when this happens, uh, this happens before the merge window, which means that uh, that stuff is not yet in uh, Linux tray. It's not yet uh, carved in stone. It could still be changed. Uh, but for some reason, upstream maintainers don't want to rebase uh, their Git branches. Uh, so they will never 
merge two patches together, even if it would make history better. Um, this is something I don't really like. And another, uh, another case where sometimes history uh, is lost or imperfect, um, we have a process for the kernel and many projects have that too now, uh, to have signed off by lines, uh, reviewed by lines, uh, added to every patch to track who wrote it and who reviewed the patch and uh, approved it. Um, and sometimes arrays have many different people who can review the patches, uh, so we don't wait for everybody to review a patch uh, before committing it. Uh, and as a result, it happens quite frequently that uh, someone reviews a patch uh, a bit late. Uh, and by the time he say, okay, I reviewed the patch and it was good and I do approve it, uh, the patch is already committed and uh, the information that it was also reviewed by that person is lost. Uh, so we are, we are missing credits. Uh, the guy did some work, did review the patch, and it does not get credit for that, uh, which is bad. We want to encourage people to review patches, so we want to track and give credit uh, to everyone as appropriate. Um, and the worst case I've seen uh, so far uh, is even a build breakage, that is uh, a patch which was committed, uh, accepted, uh, even though it was building the break in some cases, and uh, a few hours after that, uh, the fix-up patch came to fix that. And in the Git history of the project, uh, these are still two separate commits. Uh, one would break the build, so if you are trying to bisect, for example, later, uh, uh, you may hit a build breakage, which is a pain. Uh, and this could have been avoided easily if just people were uh, working a bit differently, um, rebasing or simply using a different tool. And that different tool does exist, it's named Quilt. Quilt is, in my opinion, very good uh, for work in progress. Uh, when you are developing, when uh, review is still uh, in progress, still fresh, when you're testing or, or more generally, uh, when you're hacking around. Um, and this is one of the main uses I have for Quilt and, and many other developers uh, use it for as well. Uh, now I propose a few practical use cases or demo, if you want, uh, of what I do on a weekly basis, let's say, uh, with Quilt. Um, I'm not only a, a contributor to the kernel, I'm also maintaining uh, a few drivers and subsystems. Um, so I'm also doing patch reviews, and I'm using Quilt for that. Um, so um, typically, I will receive uh, patches from contributors by email. So let me open my open my email client, and in this case, uh, so I kept a copy. Uh, quilt demo, it's here. Uh, guy sends me a patch which fixes a small bug at resume time in a I2C MUX driver. Technical part is not important. What is important is how I will review the patch and what I will do with it. So I save that to a file. I rename that to something more convenient. Um, and I go to my working tree uh, with a Linux kernel where I want to apply the patch because as a reviewer, I want to apply the patch, test that it builds, uh, test that it passes uh, script we have to validate uh, code formats. Uh, then it, if it's okay, I can apply it. If it's not, I have to ask for updates from uh, whoever contributed it. Uh, so yeah, we have a, a typical kernel uh, directory with all the source code, and I will use Quilt import to import uh, the patch I just received from the, from the developer. There it is. Uh, so as this is the only patch I have, uh, the Quilt series is very simple, just one patch, and it's not applied yet. Uh, with Quilt push, I will apply the patch, 
I will look briefly at it to see uh, how it looks like, if it's OK or not. Um, I will check format of it uh, with check patch. Yeah, I can use a quilt, sorry, quilt top, so that uh, it checks the currently applied patch without typing its full name. Um, and the guy apparently did good work because uh, his patch uh, passes the test. Uh, now, while reviewing, uh, I found something not okay. Uh, what is it? Yeah. This is my reply to the gain question uh, for that patch. And I noticed that uh, he uses now a new function which uh, is provided by a header file. It does not include in the driver. So uh, this may break the build at some point. So I asked him for an update uh, of the patch which would add the missing include file. Um, and I wait for the guy to reply. And the guy is good contributor, and he replies quickly with the changes I asked for. But this is a guy I don't really know. Uh, this is the first time I work with him. I don't know if I can trust him. So I will do a review of the new patch anyway. So I will uh, save the second version of the patch, rename it again to something more convenient. And right before uh, I try to remove the old patch and apply the new patch, I will use powerful uh, quilt command, which I did not mention before, which is snapshot. Quilt snapshot will uh, basically take a snapshot of the working directory as it exists at this very moment, that is with the first patch, first version of the patch applied. Uh, that way we'll be able later to compare uh, the new version with the old version. In this case, it's simple patch affecting a single file, so it would be easy to compare manually, but uh, you can do that even for large patch which uh, affect the world tree. So now I can pop the first version of the patch. I will delete it. I will import the new version of the patch. I will push it. I can check what it looks like. This is the patch you guys sent. And now, more importantly, I can ask for the differences between the first version, which is in the snapshot, and the new version, which is applied currently. And this is what it looks like. And this is a great news because this is exactly what I asked for. That is just add the missing header file uh, to fix the problem. Uh, what is very interesting with that is that uh, it lets you check very quickly if the contributor uh, provided more changes than you asked for or missed a change you asked for. Uh, extra changes can come just because the guy was uh, overzealous and trying to make more changes that you asked for. Uh, and maybe in the new changes, there are more things to comment on. Or maybe the guy is trying to sneak in uh, bad code into your project. Uh, and if a patch is very large, it can be easy to hide bad code in the project. Uh, and here I'm happy because I see that the guy did exactly what I asked for. So then I will uh, check the other, uh, commit it, and thank the guy on the list for his contribution. So that was basically to present you the snapshot command, which I think is, is quite powerful. Um, another thing we use Quilt for uh, at SUSE is uh, to maintain all the packages of the distribution uh, for, for open SUSE and for the enterprise projects as well. Uh, all the products are in a large tool on a server called uh, OBS, uh, the build service, uh, the open build service. Uh, and in that tool, uh, all packages are stored basically as uh, a tarball with all the sources from upstream in it, and a number of patches on top of that. Uh, there are two flavors of patches basically, uh, patches which we backported from upstream, uh, bug fixes or regression fixes, and uh, also 
patches which we use for integration, proper integration into OpenSUSE. And this patch is which we can't really push upstream because it only makes sense for us. We try to have as few as possible, but uh, sometimes we just have to keep them. Um, so I will demonstrate that too. So in this example, I will uh, do a maintenance update, uh, a version update, sorry, of um, I2C tools, which is one of package I'm responsible for. Um, in the initial state, uh, version 3.1.0 is uh, currently package version. Uh, you can see there are a number of patches uh, included on top of it uh, in the current package. And what I will do is update to the latest upstream version, which is 3.1.1. I uh, already fetched the table from uh, the server, and uh, we will see how it, how it works. Um, so what you want to do at this point is uh, copy the new table into a project, which I'm doing now, removing the old table, which is no longer used. Uh, then you would edit the spec file to mention the new version and uh, update the patch list. Uh, you can see two flavors of patches here. Um, doesn't really work, anyway. Um, the patches with uh, R6 something in the name uh, are backports from upstream uh, subversion uh, repository. Uh, all these are already included in the new version, of course. Uh, however, uh, there are at the top two acric project patches which are uh, not yet included in the uh, stable branch upstream. So this we want to, to keep them. Uh, and I will update the spec file accordingly. So we do a uh, version update. So it's now 3.1.1. Uh, I will delete of the patches which are already included and which we no longer need. I will keep the two patches which are not yet upstream. And at that point, you have to check because there's absolutely no guarantee that the patches I have kept still apply cleanly on top of the upstream package. Uh, there have been many other updates upstream, uh, which I'm not necessarily aware of. And it could be that some of the changes are not compatible with the patches I want to keep in my package. For this, I will use the quilt setup command, which I mentioned briefly before, uh, which will expand the package uh, and prepare the, the patches so that they can be applied on top of it uh, in a quilt compatible way. So I do that and, oh, crap, it doesn't work. Uh, Quilt setup tells me something went wrong, uh, which basically means that at least one of the patches in there did not apply as it should have. And uh, the good thing now is that uh, not only it tells me it failed, but it gives me the opportunity to check uh, what exactly happened and try to fix it. Um, so uh, here I am in the already expanded tree uh, with patches already, which should, should have been listed, but are not. Okay. No, I'm in the wrong directory. Here you go. So you can see you, uh, we have two patches which are ready to be applied, and at least one of them failed. So I will try to apply them in sequence and see where it failed. First one does apply with some offset. If I want, I can refresh it to get rid of the offset. And to check that it actually works, I can pop it, push it again, and you see that this time it applies without offset. Offset is generally not that bad as long as it's not too too huge, but uh, some people try to uh, have no offset at all uh, as much as possible. Then I try to push the second patch and this is where things start to fail. 
uh, one of the hunks uh, in the patch did not apply. What I can do at this point is uh, ask Quilt to still try to apply as much as possible with the dash F option, uh, which means force. Uh, if I do that, uh, Quilt will apply, apply everything it can and uh, leave a reject file, uh, which I can take a look at uh, to see what exactly failed. And we see that this is a pretty minor thing. Uh, the part which failed is the one which we are trying to update the copy copyright here. So this is not that important. And uh, if I look at the file in question, uh, you can see that upstream did already the same change and already applied the copy art here, which means that actually everything is well. Uh, I can just remove the failing unk uh, uh, from that patch and, and we will be okay. Which I can do again with the refresh command. I can even clean up the reject file which is no longer needed. And at that point, uh, I have the new version which is ready to be packaged. I have verified that all the patches which we want to keep on top of upstream are applying cleanly. Uh, I can demonstrate it again by poppy, popping all the files and pushing all the files again, and it applies just fine. So at this point, uh, the package is ready to be sent to OBS uh, for building, packaging, and uh, sending to the world. So in this example, we saw uh, mostly the quilt setup command uh, and quilt refresh to update the patches in a, in a package. A third use case I would like to present, uh, which is more specific to uh, our work inside SUSE, but uh, I'm pretty certain uh, our projects must work similarly, uh, is how we manage the SUSE kernel. Uh, basically, it's almost the same as the previous use case, uh, just it's a bit more complex because the kernel is a more complex package. Uh, we don't really uh, store the source code uh, inside the project. Instead, instead it's generated with scripts. Um, in that example, I will uh, backport a patch from upstream to the OpenSUSE uh, 13.1 kernel. So I have a tree. Uh, no, it's not here. OpenSys 13.1, here we go. Uh, the tree looks like that in the project. We have different directories for the patches we want to apply and configuration files which say how the tree will be generated. Uh, and the service file is a bit more complex here um, because it's generated, basically, uh, depending on different parameters. But if I can make that larger, I'm afraid not. Um, anyway, so basically I will simply import a new patch in the series, uh, in the middle of the series, because we try to group patches uh, depending on uh, which subsystem they affect. It makes uh, keeping track of everything much easier. Um, so I have a patch somewhere on my disk. Here, I have a patch which I have uh, fetched from upstream and which I will be applying uh, to, to a project. Uh, so I copy that name to the service file. I copy to the project as well. Uh, I run our own script to prepare the tree and I ask it to stop at the patch I just added. And it will generate a source tray, pretty much like Quill Setup is doing, but uh, in a different way. It's a bit longer because there are more patches, but it should be still reasonably fast. 
So you can see it applies all patches up to the one I want to add. And so what I can do at this point is verify, uh, move to the working tree first, and verify that the patch applies cleanly. And I'm lucky this time because the patch does indeed apply cleanly and I will not have to fix anything, just minor offset. Uh, I would typically at this point uh, edit the header uh, to add my name on it to say that I agree that this patch goes to, to open SUSE kernel. Uh, looks like that, so you have the original header and you can add anything you want there, or edit or whatever. Um, interesting things we can do at this point, we want to do at this point, is to verify, uh, because the series is very large and maintained by, by dozens of people, uh, that no patch further in the series is touching the same file in possibly incompatible ways. We, you don't want to break uh, another patch in the series uh, with the one you, you added. Uh, this is where the quilt um, files and quilt patches commands are handy. Uh, quilt files will tell me the list of files modified by the patch I just added. Uh, easy one this time is just one file, but it could be more. And with quilt patches, I will ask for the list of all patches in the series which modifies any of the file I just touched. Uh, and this time again, I am pretty lucky because uh, there are only two such patches. patches. One is already applied because it's uh, ahead in the, uh, it's before in the patch series, so I don't have to care about it. Uh, then there is my patch, which is shown in, in yellow here, and no further patch modify the same file. So now I'm sure that I did not break anything and that all of the patches will apply just as cleanly as they did before. Uh, in the case, there would have been more patches uh, touching that file. I would have to move there and check if everything was still applying cleanly. And if not, update whatever needs to be, uh, refresh, and so on. This can also be quite useful to make sure nobody else already applied exactly the same patch you've been adding. Uh, it can happen sometimes uh, because uh, sometimes different projects have the same patch as a dependency. So uh, different people at SUSE or other companies have the same problem. Uh, will backport as different series uh, the same patch, and you end up trying to apply the same patch twice. And sometimes it happens that the patch system manages to apply twice the same patch with bad consequences. Typically build failures, but sometimes worse. Uh, so that's it for this uh, little demo. We've seen uh, quill patches, quill files, uh, refresh again. At that point, I would typically uh, commit to our Git project, uh, the new patch and the updated series file uh, together with changelog. Uh, the, this one is actually the Git ID from upstream, which we record for our own purposes, but which will be different from the Git uh, ID uh, I will get when I commit to the tree. Well, uh, we keep the original Git uh, commit in a special tag, which uh, surprisingly is git commit. Uh, we have special format for that, uh, where we track uh, the upstream git commit and the first version of the upstream kernel where the, the patch shown. And then we have a few tools uh, which can be used to track that. Uh, for example, if uh, the commit is later included in a stable patch, uh, we have to get rid of it in our on tree, otherwise we get a collision. Uh, we also use that when you we update the kernel version for the next open source version. Uh, we'll have a new kernel and we check that all the patches we had applied before uh, have a commit ID from upstream, uh, which is already included in the new version. And uh, if it's not the case, we investigate uh, the remaining few patches, uh, why they do not have a commit ID or if they do have one, 
how comes that uh, it's not yet upstream? Did I reply? Okay. Um, a few non limitations. If you want to play with quilt, you better uh, be aware about that. Um, the first thing to remember when you use quilt is that, uh, unlike uh, Git or, or other source code management tools, uh, quilt does not know, uh, does not backup files before you want to touch them. Uh, you have to tell them explicitly uh, in that file, I'm going to edit this specific file. And so you have to make a backup copy of that, uh, so that can do diff, uh, rollback, and so on. Uh, so do not forget to run quilt add on every file you are going to modify. Um, do not hesitate to pass more files than you are going to actually modify. Uh, quilt doesn't care, it will make a backup of everything you pass. And uh, unmodified files are not included in the final patch. Uh, you can also use quilt edit, which is in my opinion, safer because uh, when you get used to that, uh, it will both add the file to Quilt and start your favorite editor. So uh, it's less risky. You have less risk to forget about Quilt add. Uh, I was told also that uh, Emacs has a plugin uh, of some sort which can do that for you automatically. So if you use Emacs, look for uh, that plugin and maybe install it. Um, a second limitation is that Quilt can be a bit slow. Uh, I did not mention that before, but uh, Quilt is actually a set of uh, bash scripts. Uh, so it's, it's all shell scripts, uh, almost all, um, which is not exactly the fastest uh, programming language uh, on the planet. So yes, sometimes it can be a bit slow, uh, but I am working hard to solve most performance issues. Uh, do not hesitate to report performance <coughs> issues to me and anyway, I will look into them and, and handle them seriously. Um, and sometimes it's very simple to solve even huge uh, critical performance issues. Uh, if you want a small example of that, uh, and if you also want to see how much we are pushing Quilt uh, at SUSE, um, this is the SLI 11 SP3 kernel tray. And if you want an idea of how many patches we have on top of that, that's it. So we have over uh, 15,000 patches uh, on top uh, of the upstream kernel. Uh, this is the record, I think, uh, at SUSE, we've never done more than that. And I suspect that nobody else anywhere else has ever done more than that. I hope. <laughs> I hope so. Um, so if there are performance issues in Quilt, we are very likely to eat them before you do. Uh, one of these, uh, the Quilt series has just run and which completed in a few, little than one second approximately, uh, used to take over three minutes to complete uh, until a couple months or one year ago. And uh, so I looked into that and tried to find a bottleneck uh, causing that. And the patch fixing it was surprisingly simple. It's basically that. Uh, at the top, green is maybe not very readable, but uh, at the top uh, is very just a small helper function uh, to format something and the real fix is at the bottom. Uh, I basically replaced a for loop, which is doing an echo on each patch individually, and replaced that with a single printf, which is able to print an array in one pass. And so this very simple change uh, makes the command complete in less than one second instead of, of over three minutes before. So I think I mostly solved the uh, most critical performance fixes by now, but if you can find more, uh, just report to, it, to me. Um, another issue which bothers uh, users quite often uh, is that unlike most other tools, uh, Quilt has two uh, possible configuration files. One is a system one in uh, dash etc, in slash etc, and one is the user one. And unlike most other tools, it does not merge 
both configuration files. As soon as you create a configuration file for yourself, uh, everything which was system-wide uh, is lost and you have to add it to your own configuration file if you want to also have it. Uh, it surprises people very often. They add something to their configuration files because they need it and all of a sudden Quilt starts behaving completely differently than before. Uh, the way to solve that, uh, there are two possibilities. Either you uh, take a look at the system file, uh, system configuration file from time to time and update your own file uh, to, keep, uh, to keep up. Or you can just source uh, the system configuration file into your own uh, Quilt RC. Uh, the format of Quilt RC is basically, uh, it's bash itself because the, the file is sourced uh, from the tool, so everything you can write in, in Bash, uh, you can use in quite Quilt RC. So it's quite powerful. You can have conditionals or change the configuration depending on where you are. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff if you want. Uh, the only thing to keep in mind is that if you source the system wide file uh, in your own configuration file, then you may inherit changes later, which maybe you did not want. But in general, it's it's okay. That kind. Um, I will I will explain here uh, what you can put in in Quilt RC and even a bit more. I have an example in the next slide. Uh, so these are the cool tips uh, which uh, let you use Quilt at its full potential. Uh, first of all, Quilt commands can be abbreviated. Uh, some <laughs> common names are pretty long. They are they have eight characters, which is pretty long to type on a keyboard. Uh, so thankfully you can shorten as long as uh, it's unambiguous with other commands. Uh, you can shorten them. So Quill being heavily interactive, it's, it's quite convenient. Uh, I can tell you that I, except for this demo, I did not type uh, Quill series or Quill refresh uh, in full uh, for years. It's always uh, Quill ref, uh, Quill uh, ser, and so on. So it says keystrokes. Uh, all commands also print uh, the help with all the uh, available options and behavior uh, with dash hash as most uh, sane tools do. Uh, for example, uh, series, you can see a list of options uh, and an explanation of what exactly it does. And there is, of course, uh, do I need to mention that a manual page which summarizes everything, so it's fully documented. Um, and then there is the configuration file which you can use to tweak the behavior of Quilt. Uh, first thing I do, and you should probably do as well, is that uh, you can ask Quilt to always include the patches prefix uh, into every command output which uh, prints patch names. Uh, if I do Quilt series here. You can see that uh, at the very beginning of each patch name, it, it includes the prefix to go to that patch, uh, which means you can then include uh, that output directly in other commands like uh, check patch scrapes. Uh, you don't have to type the directory name manually each time. So again, it saves uh, keystrokes. You can say to your favorite editor at this point too, uh, which much, most people already uh, include uh, in their environment, but uh, you can override it in Quilt RC. So if you want to use a different editor or different editor options, you can do that at that point. Uh, you can use a color option, uh, which is not enabled by default, uh, but make Quilt much easier to do. You can colorize the output of diff series, push, and patches commands. Uh, and more generally, you can set every option for every command uh, by default if this is an option you use frequently, uh, as you will see in the, in the next slide. Uh, and lastly, Quilt now supports a pager, much like uh, Git does, so every output can be patched to less or anything you want. Uh, so you can enable that and configure that if you want, or you can disable it if like me, you don't like it. Uh, this is an example, Quilt RC file. Uh, and this is, I think, the next, the last slide. 
Um, this is my own actually. Uh, so at the top, you have global options, uh, the prefix, which I already explained, uh, two general options, uh, which will ask patch outputs uh, not to include the index line and not to include the stamp, uh, timestamps uh, so that the output is predictable and, and doesn't change. Um, then you can pass options for diff and patch because Quilt relies heavily on external tools such as diff and patch. Uh, so here, for example, I'm passing uh, dash p to diff to have uh, function names uh, in all chunks to see in which fun in C function uh, changes are done. Uh, I pass the first option to patch every time to make sure it applies consistently with the same first settings. And then the more powerful, powerful thing is that uh, for every quill command, you can uh, add default arguments. Uh, here, I added the color argument to diff, push, series, patches. Uh, and then I also add default settings uh, to a re refresh command uh, because I want all patches I refresh to look the same. Uh, so I set the formatting to add the diff stat, uh, strip the trailing white space automatically and so on. This is much more convenient than having to type that uh, every time you run a command. And that's it. So if you have any question about Quilt, feel free. Yes? So, so the question was uh, how to avoid the issues with uh, forgetting quilt add. Uh, and one of the suggestions was to maybe make the files read only uh, originally. Well, guess what? This is exactly what we are doing at SUSE for the kernel. Uh, the original tree is read only, and you have to explicitly uh, add write access, uh, which is a good way to avoid. Uh, actually, we have two reasons for that. One is for quilt itself. And the second one is that uh, we use linked trees uh, because we have several products based on the same kernel version. Uh, so, so as to save speed and, and uh, disk uh, space, uh, we use linked trees. And of course, we don't want to mess up the original tree uh, with original files. So everything is read only uh, to make sure nobody accidentally writes uh, to original file. So yes, this is actually uh, one possible way to handle it, uh, read only tree. The drawback is that it uh, forces you to explicitly uh, chmod every file when you need. Or maybe you can script that to help a bit, but uh, yes. Yes, we could possibly do that as well. Uh, in a way, this is quite what quilt import does because at the time you do quilt import and quilt push it does back up every everything so maybe it's more a matter of workflow than really adding something to quilt any other question yes uh, 
scholars um, to be passing interested with post government to a single one. I mean, facing the touch, I mean, uh, selling the clothes, having the facing the touch in his pocket. So I do the workshop for him after 8 p.m. and make it big. So I think it's kind of a common task for you to be a post and make a single touch. But you have lots of research, so I know why I'm going to touch. Interesting. So the question was, uh, would it be possible to uh, improve the cool snapshot feature so that it automates it a bit more and you don't have to pop uh, and run all the commands manually? Uh, that's actually a very interesting idea. I never thought about that. Uh, yes, certainly there's some room for automation in this area. Uh, thanks for the idea. Any other question? Yep. Yes, I do. So the question was, how can we avoid uh, spamming too many people with a quilt mail command uh, when backporting a huge uh, patch series? Uh, I don't think you're alone having this issue. Uh, another problem is that we can't uh, limit the CCs by default. Uh, because most people will want to see uh, full patch series and not just one random patch. Because in most cases, uh, if you miss the beginning of a series, you just can't. Uh, you can you just can't do anything with a single patch you received. Uh, this is the reason for the default behavior of Quilt. Uh, now, yes, we could certainly add an option uh, to limit for specific cases. Uh, good idea again. Uh, Either send me a mail or create a request on uh, Savannah where Quilt is hosted. Otherwise, I most likely will forget about it. But yeah, I can I can look into that. Okay, I think we are done with the questions. Uh, anyway, we'll be around. So if you have any further question later, uh, feel free to come and see me. Thank you for your attention.